Hi everyone and welcome back to the Living Well with Schizophrenia YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reacting to and discussing whether or not the schizophrenia simulation videos on YouTube are accurate. Um, but first, if you're new here, my name is Lauren and I make videos on what it's like living with schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. So make sure to subscribe to our channel if you wanna learn more about that and turn on notifications not to miss anything. Also, if you find videos like this helpful at all, please make sure to check out our Patreon page. The link is in the description below. We're really working hard to develop this channel and to build resources for you all, and we would really appreciate any support you can give. Thank you. Okay, so here's how we're going to organize today's video. So I'm going to watch three different schizophrenia simulations. Um, the first one being the most popular or the most viewed schizophrenia simulation on YouTube. The second one being quite a popular one that was more recently uploaded. And the third one being the one that I find to be the truest to what it's actually like living with schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. And so we are going to include timestamps for when I talk about each of these videos in the description below. And we're also going to include links to the full videos because I'm not going to show the full videos when I'm talking about them. I'm only gonna show small clips that I feel are important to discuss. So if you wanna watch the full videos, the links, the links are in the description below. All right, so viewing some of the videos that we're going to view today, it might be a little bit triggering. I know for myself, I felt a little bit triggered when I was first watching these videos. And so we're just giving a quick trigger warning beforehand. Um, you know, if you are experiencing triggering effects and you are in distress at all watching these videos, please don't continue to watch them. They are just meant to show what it's like living with the illness, but for some people who are living with it, it may be triggering. So just a quick trigger warning in advance um, that we are going to be showing depictions about um, hallucinations, paranoia, delusions, and all those kinds of things. So schizophrenia simulation is one of the top search um, results on YouTube. So I'm just gonna type in schizophrenia in YouTube on the search schizophrenia. And you can see that schizophrenia is the first one and then schizophrenia simulation is the next top result. So a lot of people are searching for this and a lot of people want to know what it's like. So that is why we're making a video trying to determine whether or not these are actually accurate depictions. Okay, so the first one is the most viewed. The first one that pops up, it's been viewed 19 million times at this time. And so we are going to watch this one first. So I like the mundaneness of the video so far, and they're kind of showing that at times people who are living with schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder experience the world much like anybody else. So I kind of like that they included a portion of that. I'm kind of waiting for the shoe to drop when they start kind of like um, sensationalizing symptoms, but so far, so good. Worse. Waking up now. Oh, the phone don't answer, they'll know. They know who you are. Why are you stop worthless? Stupid. So stupid. They hate you. Why are you going to pick up the phone? Stupid. Worthless. Stupid. They'll know. Coming for you. Something wrong. They'll know. Package. Poison package. Hang on. Never over poison. Coming for you. Stop it now. Okay, so so far, I, for me personally, anyway, this is a little bit 
a little bit much. Um, it's not like I wake up from a nap or whatever and immediately I'm just bombarded with like overwhelming symptoms. That's usually not the way it works. Usually for me anyway, the symptoms kind of creep up slowly and it's not just all of a sudden I'm hit when I wake up with overwhelming symptoms. Also, the voices in this are really disturbing. Um, and for me, it's more like um, this kind of androgynous voice that is kind of just commenting on things that I'm doing. And it's not like this like weird, like whisper, menacing, overwhelming voice. It's It's more of a clear voice that is just kind of either commenting on what I'm doing or um, making comments direct toward me or when it's, when it's bad and I'm not on medication, making like command hallucinations and that kind of stuff. But so far it's not a bad representation. He picked up the phone and then put it down without saying anything, which is, which is kind of accurate. Like when you're experiencing a lot of symptoms, it's hard to focus on reality. And so it's hard to interact properly with reality. So that's not bad. Addiction in your spare so time. Dumb. Now for a quick check of the weather. Yeah, I look like a weatherman. There's a slight chance of shit tons of rain, partly chance of you being a loser, 100% chance of you being worthless. Oh, uh, what are you doing today, guy? You just gonna sit there with your mouth open like that? Coffee. Yeah, smart move. Worthless. <laughs> okay, so the dialogue that's being delivered about the voices is kind of accurate at times, like, um, in terms of what they're actually saying, it's kind of accurate, but the overwhelming like whispering, um, and like background, like mumbling and stuff, I personally don't experience. It's more clear in terms of what's being said to me. Um, in terms of the people on the TV interacting with you, um, for me anyway, it's less direct and it's more like I interpret what I'm seeing as, um, subliminal messages towards me that are directed toward me when I'm experiencing that. I know some people do think that the television or the people on television are speaking directly to them, but for me, it's more of like the secret messages that are hidden in that when I'm experiencing that symptom. Now getting coffee. It's too hot. Fire. Fire. Like I kind of have to laugh at this one. Um, I personally have never experienced seeing an explosion in my coffee cup, but maybe some other people have. But for me, this is a little bit sensationalized. So the explosion was a little ridiculous for me, but um, the messaging that was being said to him was a little bit more accurate in terms of like thinking that something was poisonous and you shouldn't consume it and then not consuming it because you believe those messages. So um, it's... It's hard to understand sometimes that voices in your head are just voices in your head and you really give them a, a little more weight than you should. And so he didn't drink the coffee because they were telling him not to, it was poison. And that's kind of accurate. He has to answer. Stay in. Do something. Stay away from the door. Protect us. Stop the weather. No, no, no. Don't answer. You are stupid to open the door. He has to answer. Don't do it. This is for you. Thanks, Shut it. Shut the door. Shut the door. Don't open it. Stupid to open. You are stupid to open the door. So he opened the door and like, or he locked the door and then opened it slightly to just kind of peek out because he was hearing voices that were saying not to open the door and also to open the door. And he was feeling probably paranoid about interacting with the person who rang the doorbell. And that's kind of accurate feeling like sometimes, like sometimes I've been so paranoid about people at my door that I just hide and I don't answer the door because voices either are telling me not to or because I'm just feeling overwhelming paranoia. And so that's kind of accurate. Um, again, though, I personally don't experience like lots of voices at the same time telling me conflicting things. It's more like the voice is conflicting with my own internal dialogue. So um, 
if they're telling me not to open the door, but I want to open the door, that's more where the conflict comes in. It's not like I'm being inundated with lots of different voices telling me different things, but I know some people may experience that. So for me personally, it's not really like that, but it may be for other people. Okay, that's a little sensationalized too. I've never seen like a bloody hand reaching out from a package or whatever. I do experience like some visual hallucinations, but usually they're in the form of like seeing spiders crawling by or seeing shadows out of the corner of my eye or... Um, I guess one time I hallucinated an actual person, but usually I personally don't experience like really terrifying visuals like that one. But he batted the box away after he saw that, which is really accurate in terms of like being startled by something in your mind or a voice or something and then reacting in reality to it. So I've definitely had that where I've experienced some sort of sensation that's probably a hallucination and then I react in the real world by either like jumping back or smacking a box out of the way or something like that. So that's kind of accurate. Did you get my call? I tried calling you about my package that's coming. I was wondering if it came. Oh, I see it came. She knows. knows. Know all oh, your worthless oh, secrets. Coming to get you. you. And your secrets. Just yeah. stop Mike, trying. Okay? Give up. You're not acting right. Worthless. Worthless. You're the hospital. The hospital, hospital steal your secrets. secrets. She's coming closer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's kind of accurate in terms of like when you're in the midst of psychosis and people who love you are around you and noticing that something is a little off, it can be really easy to kind of, um, barricade yourself away from them and to think that they are part of the problems or the overwhelmingly kind of scary perceptions that you're having of the world and they kind of get wrapped up into those delusions that you're experiencing. And so when I was in the midst of psychosis the last time, Rob um, was kind of one of these people that got wrapped up into my delusions. I'm the closest to him in of all the people in the world. And um, I know that he loves me and cares about me and I love him and care about him, but I was still kind of scared of him when I was in the midst of my psychosis. And so it was kind of accurate that he was cowering away from what I assume is his partner. Um, even though she was saying like, hey, I'm worried about you. I think it's time to go to the hospital. And that kind of got wrapped up into the delusion of like, they're trying to hurt you. The hospital is a bad place. And that, that's pretty accurate. The scream at the end was a little much. I don't think that that's that was a little sensational in terms of like the experience, I guess, internally, it's like you're screaming because it's all very scary. Um, overall, that was a pretty good representation of what schizophrenia is like. It's very, very hard to, to accurately display in video format what it's like because it's kind of like all of your senses are just kind of on overdrive or... Um, misfiring or that kind of stuff. So it's very hard to display that in video format, but I think they did a not bad job. Some of the stuff was kind of sensational, sensationalized, but overall it wasn't bad. Also, it's really important to note that this video is a depiction of somebody who is in the midst of like intense psychosis and probably needs to get to the hospital. Um, on an average day, somebody who's living with schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder and is properly managing it is not going to experience the world like this. This is not how I experience my world on a day-to-day -day basis. When I stop taking my medication and I'm in the midst of intense psychosis, this is more accurate as to what it's like. But on a day-to-day -day basis, people who are living with schizophrenia don't experience the world like this. Maybe there's like glimpses of parts of this that they experience, but it's not this extreme. Okay, so the next schizophrenia simulation video that we're going to watch is called Realistic Schizophrenia Simulation. So we'll see how realistic it is. It's the second one when you search schizophrenia simulation on YouTube and it was uploaded about two months ago and already has 27,000 views. So we are going to check this one out now. Where am I? 
Where are you going? Look out! This is pointless. Even that kid knows you're stupid. Everyone knows you're stupid. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. Um, so I'm assuming that the first voice that we heard is kind of his internal dialogue and him speaking to himself, which I like that they included because you do still have your own internal thoughts when you're in the midst of psychosis or living with schizophrenia. And I also thought it was good that they were like, they used his voice to be like, look out when the child ran by, because it does feel like you're kind of oversensitive to a lot of stimuli. And so if there is an unexpected stimulus stimuli running by, it's it's a little jarring and it's kind of like, oh, oh got to be aware of that. And so that was kind of accurate. Who cares about you? Why do you even try? Why do you even bother? You're lucky. Everything's listening to you. You don't deserve happiness. The wine bottles. See, they're laughing. She's talking about looking at you. Okay, so I just want to comment on like the sound of the voices. This is not how I experience voices where it's like this like intimidating husky voice and this little like small feminine voice. For me personally, I really only hear one voice typically and it's a really androgynous voice. I can't really tell if it's male or female or I, like I can't it's I can't put a finger on it really. I've kind of identified it. I've named it Jennifer um, just as a way to kind of be like, okay, that's what that is. That's who that is. And I'm not, it helps me not to pay as much attention to it. But um, in terms of how he's hearing voices, that's not really how I personally hear voices. Maybe it's how other people hear voices. Everybody laughs at you. Go ahead. Get some ice cream. You don't want that. It'll make you fatter than you already are. Worthless. Look out. Trash. Don't take that one. No, go over to the other one. It's poison. Grab a wine bottle. Go ahead. A couple bottles of booze. Just drink it. Eat it. Look out. Passed out. Nobody cares. Hopeless. Where did they go? Nobody loves you. No one could. Some junk food. (gasps) They don't care. So I think it's important to understand that this video is also somebody who is in the throes of intense psychosis. And so when I'm experiencing intense psychosis, this is kind of what the dialogue is like, where it's, it's, it's kind of harsh and not very nice to you. And also giving you kind of command, kind of command hallucinations where it's telling you to do specific things. Um, and it's just kind of, for me anyway, it's kind of a generally negative overtone and, um, negative commands. So that's kind of accurate as well. Talking about you, even he you're such a loser. Oh, he's, he's walking away because you stink. You smell. Why do you he's gonna bother? You're stupid. They're fake yeah, smiles. Back, turn, be- They're so the hallucinations are now interacting with real people in the situation, and that is also accurate because um, a lot of times when I, when I'm in psychosis again, it's like. Um, it's I, my my hallucinations and delusions start to interact with people around me where I think that people hate me or they're looking at me funny because they don't like me or they don't like something that I'm doing or um, there's that kind of tone to things with other people around and I'm being told that you know people people don't like me don't want to be around me and that kind of thing so that is also a little accurate. Because he doesn't like it's you. Going to get you. Oh. And she's leaving you. because you're worthless. You should have never oh, been Yeah, born. go ahead. Grab it all. Eat all the food. Don't touch that. Eat it all. Don't, Don't touch that. Bother getting out of bed. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how fat you get. What are you thinking? Go ahead. Uh, don't don't eat that you one. Want that. Don't drink that one. Go get some you alcohol. You're going to die. Go get the ice cream. Oh, you Give up. Them. Oh, the lights. Right the lights. Where'd they go? The lights are whispering. After you. Look out. She it's knows. Me. She knows. Me, me. Even he doesn't like you. I'm talking about you. He's calling the cops. You're worthless. So I like that they're incorporating like lights and they're saying look out again because when you're in psychosis, your environment feels very overwhelming and um, it's hard to focus on really anything because everything around you is like 
overstimulating and especially in an environment like this, like a, a corner store where there's a lot of people and there's a lot of um, things around you, it's hard to focus and it's hard to kind of know or like ground yourself in reality. And so I like that they incorporated like, oh, the lights are whispering to you or like, look out, there's stimulus moving around because that's kind of what it's like. No, no. He can't even look at you. He can't even look at you. Look he at him. He can't even look at you. You're so disgustingly ugly. Knows. You're gross. He's going for his He's gun. Just his gun. Give you this. So again, they're kind of showing that like you interpret other people's behaviors or actions as being about something you did or being about um something to do with you. And I think that that's a common delusion that people get wrapped up in when they're in psychosis. They think that everything around them and everything that everybody's doing, or I anyway, I think that everything that everybody's doing around me has to do with something I did or something I am. And so it's easy to get like sucked into this narrative that everyone hates you because they're not looking at you or everyone is out to get you or that kind of thing. And so that's a little bit accurate too. You need to get out. Just get out. Get out. Get out. Just walk. Just steal it. Steal it, you thief. Go. That's right, thief. Run. outside. You're still not safe. He's not even going to bother to call the cops. Yeah, so you want to steal that too? Steal a movie. Go ahead. I know you want to. That's always you. Worthless. Get out. So intrusive thoughts is also something that um, a lot of people with schizophrenia, I think, experience. I experience it where, like, he was being told, like, oh, steal this or uh, steal the movies or whatever. And um, when I'm in the midst of psychosis, I do hear things like this and I do have thoughts like this that I would never, I would never um, entertain usually or never even think about usually. But you get intrusive thoughts when you're in psychosis about things that bother you, like steal this or, you know, do something that you know is wrong. And so that's kind of accurate, too. There they are. Pointless waste of space. There they are. They're all talking about you. To your left. Run. All the movies are about you and how disgusting you are. you. So along that same vein of intrusive thoughts, a lot of times they have to do with self-harm when I'm in the throes of psychosis. And that's kind of an accurate thought or hallucination that happens when I'm in the throes of psychosis. And that's kind of another, along the lines of like the intrusive thoughts that I was talking about before. Crap. Pure water. Now you're outside, you're running away from everything. You're not even Never mind. Go back to that still face. They saw those people there. Because they think you're stupid. They hate you. Wasting your time. Nobody going? hates you. The world hates you. Where are you going? You. Wasting your time. The cars hate you. The sidewalk hates you. Help. Hey. Nobody cares. You think you're safe, but you're not. Nobody. You think home is safe. Do you think There's they will stop? No they know where you are. You're never safe. Everybody you're never knows. safe. You're never safe. You can't hide. Whew. Okay, so... Um... It was kind of an accurate portrayal of how like disorienting the voices that you can hear and the like commands that they're giving you and the tone of it around like self-harm and that kind of stuff can be really overwhelming. And I also like how there was um, sirens in the background, which you would assume are police. And there was like instant paranoia around that. And that is something that I experience a lot when I'm in the throes of psychosis is paranoia around police and thinking that they're out to get me or they're following me to, you know, I don't know, get me in some way. And so that's a really accurate representation. The ending, when it kind of went black and like, 
it was like overwhelming voices. It's not really something that I experienced um, very much. I think it was a little sensationalized. And I think, I think the whole video was a little bit sensationalized, but overall, I think that it was a pretty good representation of what it's like in terms of kind of portraying the different stimuli around you that are overwhelming and the way you interact with other people when you're in the throes of psychosis. And it wasn't a bad video in general. Okay, so those first two videos that we watched are kind of um, not bad portrayals of what it's like to be in the throes of psychosis. Um, but the next one that I'm going to show you is one that's a little bit more nuanced in terms of being an accurate depiction of what it's like to live with schizophrenia or schizoaffective more on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that's why I kind of like it. So it's by a YouTuber named Johnny Benjamin, who is actually one of the first YouTubers that I found when I was first experiencing symptoms and I would turn to YouTube to kind of see what was going on. And so I really liked following his journey on YouTube, um, but it was the video that I'm going to show you is called Sometimes I'm Schizoaffective, All of the Time I'm Human. Sometimes I have cereal for breakfast. Sometimes I have toast for breakfast. And sometimes I have my breakfast on the go. So I really like the start of this video where he's just showing that he's just like anybody else where, you know, sometimes he has cereal for breakfast, sometimes he takes an apple for breakfast, and sometimes he takes a granola bar for breakfast. And like, we're just like anyone else in that regard where, you know, um, we're not really affected by our symptoms in day-to-day -day decisions and tasks like that. Sometimes we are affected by our symptoms, but he's just showing the more mundane side of life where we're not. Sometimes I get intrusive thoughts. Throw the glass of water, Johnny. Throw the glass of water in his face. Imagine the water all over his face. Pick it up. Pick up the glass Pick now. Up the glass of water. Pick up the glass, Johnny, in his and face. Throw it go in his face. Come on, Johnny. Throw the glass of water in his face. Come on, Johnny. Do it. Do it. Do it. Pick up the glass of water. Come on, throw it in his face. Imagine the water all over his face. Pick up the glass of water. Pick up the glass of water. Pick up the glass of water. I won't act on them. And you probably don't even notice. So I really, really like that depiction because it's completely accurate in terms of my experience with the illness. So um, you will be just engaging normally in an everyday situation, like he was having dinner or something with a group of friends and you could hear the chatter in the background. And you could see that he was continuing to engage with his friends and it looked like everything was normal, but then he was also showing you that what he was experiencing inside was not as calm and composed as he was exhibiting on the outside. And he was having some really intrusive thoughts about throwing the glass of water at someone. And that is completely accurate in terms of what I was talking about before about intrusive thoughts happening when you're having symptoms. And so um, that was a really well done clip, in my opinion. I like nothing more than a quiet night in in front of the TV. Sometimes I get really paranoid. I think someone's following you. Someone's definitely following you. Yes, he's coming. He's dangerous. I think he's really. I think he's out to get you. I'm sure he's out to get you, Johnny. You need to be careful. You need to be really careful. He's dangerous. I know he's following you. He's getting closer. He's getting closer to you, Johnny. Okay, he's out to get you. I don't trust you. It him. might seem irrational to you, but it feels pretty real to me. Sometimes I. So I really, really like how he kind of juxtaposed. Um, just like an everyday night on the couch watching television and it was fine and normal. And then he juxtaposed that with a scene of him feeling intense paranoia about somebody following him. And that's really what it's like too, where you have these moments of normalcy and of where everything is, is fine. You're doing fine. You're just engaging in your life as you always would. And coupled with moments where you are feeling your symptoms more, more heavily. And so I have definitely experienced paranoia about people following me or about people watching me or that kind of thing. And um, like he said, it may seem a little bit ridiculous to be fixated on things like that, but it does feel very real to the person who's experiencing them. So that was really well done too. Just can't decide what to wear. 
Any ideas? Sometimes I get delusions and I start thinking that something's going on around me that's really not happening or that I'm something that I'm actually not. Like a superhuman who thinks he can save humanity and change the world. I was convinced I was some sort of messiah that had been sent down and so I wrote loads of letters and sent them off to all sorts of people telling them my vision of how to make the world a better place. See, we're not all dangerous or violent, as some papers might have you believe. All of the time, my name is Johnny Benjamin. My favourite colour is blue. I hate Mondays. I can't stand Mondays with a passion. I love chocolate. Absolutely love chocolate. Would we'll do anything, pretty much anything within reason for chocolate. I also have schizoaffective disorder, which is a combination of schizophrenia and depression. Apart from that, we're probably not that much different. We breathe the same air. You probably hate Mondays just as much as me. Our brains might work a bit differently, but really, I'm just like you. I'm just human. Oh, I just think this video is brilliant in terms of his um, depiction of normal everyday life and interacting normally with life and um, experiencing symptoms a little bit more intensely. And so when he was sitting in all the papers and discussing how he felt that he was some sort of messiah and he knew the answers to life and how to make it better and whatnot, he was really depicting really well delusions that people can have when they have schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. And it's not always going to be like harmful things like um, like self-harm or like intrusive thoughts to hurt other people or anything. Sometimes it can be like, I know the secret to making the world a better place and really running with that idea. And so I think he did such a wonderful job of really showing the nuances of living with the illness. And I love the ending where he kind of humanized himself even further and, you know, gave himself characteristics that anyone might have. And it was just so lovely how he did it in terms of really humanizing people who have schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder, but also demonstrating in an accurate and compassionate way the struggles that they experience on a day-to-day -day basis and really showing that they are not scary um, people who are living with schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder are not these dangerous, volatile people who are just lost in another version of reality. It's it's quite often that people who are living with schizophrenia or schizoaffective are dealing with their symptoms, but they're still able to engage in in life and with people around them in a way that you wouldn't necessarily know that they're experiencing symptoms. And so I think he just did a really wonderful job of giving a really accurate portrayal of what it's like to live with schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. Okay, so that wraps up the three videos that we were showing of schizophrenia simulations that you can find on YouTube. I just want to also note that these are, my comments on these videos are just based on my own experiences with the illness and they don't encompass everyone's experiences and people may relate to parts of the videos that I didn't relate to, or they may not relate to parts of the videos that I did relate to. And so if you want to share your own experiences and your own thoughts on these videos, please do so in the comments below. We would really love to hear what your experience has been like. And also for people who are watching this video, wanting to get a more fuller picture of if these schizophrenia simulations are accurate or not, your comments and your opinions will also help to inform them further. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, just a reminder that if you want to help support the creation of future videos like this, please make sure to check out our Patreon page. The link is in the description below. So thank you so much again for watching and as always, wishing you and your loved ones good health. See you in the next video. Bye.